Hey guys, let me uh, show you a quick demo of the uh, revised uh, beta projector that I'm doing for Luma Pro right now. So, um, just want to give you a quick, uh, quick heads up here. Let's first talk about the graphic settings that are required to do lighting and shadows. So, I typically jam it up to ultra, turn on lighting and shadows, ambient inclusion we can talk about in a little bit, but you got to make sure you want sun, moon, and projectors turned on which I have, and you can see I've actually got a wind light setting right now in my little uh, sky box I got here. Oh, here I am. In my little sky box I have, I've got a set of windows right here, and light can project through these windows, and you can see it projecting against this wall, and it actually works its way and projects all the way down onto her. Life is good. So in either case, this is great. Um, you can use these wind light settings. The problem is, is inside this building, I've got this really narrow angle for these windows and all that, and unless I want to do a lot of surgery to my building or just exclusively shoot outdoors, I don't really get all the advantages of the uh, sun, moon, and shadowing off the wind light. And this is what the uh, projector uh, uh, is all about in uh, Luma Pro. So uh, let me just uh, do an example. I'm going to hit res on the projector and poof, here comes, um, here comes our first projector. So um, to give you a quick understanding of the projector, um, it's resin here. Um, there's actually nine different lights for which you can turn on one of the nine lights, and I'll walk you through those things. It sits on a can, and then there's a control panel on the back that you can uh, go control it with. So um, um, to move the projector around, you just use the HUD. So let me back out of here so you can see this a little bit. I can uh, go, uh, I can go left. I can. Uh, go right, I can go down, I can go up, and it's on a little joystick mouse here, so if I hit a 45 degree angle, it goes up and right. If I hit it just a little bit, I can make these little fine precision tunings to this thing here. So in either case, the thought is, is that you actually don't watch the projector, you sit there and look at the model, and then you just dial in the sun angle that you like. By the way, there are two new buttons, in and in and out. If I go out, the, project, the shadow is smaller, or I can zoom in a bit and you can see the shadows going up and I can adjust the position again of that shadow and there you go. Um, the projector now you can kind of see it's kind of hanging down and down and low at the moment here. Let me back it out a little bit here. So what I can do is, is um, I can actually hit the control panel on this projector and make some changes to it. So uh, let's do that. Um, the first one is if you need to reset, you just uh, select Angora again and it puts it back into a normal position. Um, one of the things I can do is, is I can change the kind of light bulb that's in the projector right now. Right now I've got a very broad thing. The first thing I could do, for example, is, is I could pick a medium focus on her. And it um, takes a little bit for the projector prim to res here. Give it a second here. And now that it's res, there you go. Now I've got this projector hanging on her. Um, that's uh, kind of like a medium spotlight. And then I can move this thing around, etc. And the other thing, so we could pick another one, for example, hit the control panel on the light, the projector. Um, obviously, I could do a wide spot, a medium spot. Um, I have a tight spot that, uh, that you can pick on them. Um, I can go in and change the color of the spot. Let's go back to a wide, sp medium spot for a second here. And through the menu here, we, you're familiar with changing the normal lights. Since Okay, so what I can do is, is um, turn the can back on for a second here. Um, what I can do is I can adjust with the black row of lights, I can adjust the color here. So um, let's make it violet, for example. And I can set the violet intensity up a bit. And you can see the impact of uh, having a violet light on her versus, for example, I could pick a, um, a warming light um, just down the intensity of that warming. And this is a very common... Uh, I got too many dialog boxes up, sorry. So this is a very common uh, a gel that you might see in, in a theater setting, for example. Okay, so uh, I can always just de-res the light by pressing the res button. I can hit a res again and bring up a new light. The other thing that I can do is I can res a couple lights. So let me move this light into one position, and on him I will project, uh, project on her medium spotlight here. And now I'm going to res a second light and I can click on this guy and a projector and I can pick something else. Let's pick, um, I'll call it a soft, um, a soft texture here and give it a second to do. Now, um, if I move the lights now, I'm actually controlling two lights and both lights will move at the same time. Notice now you see two shadows on her. You might actually want to freeze one light's position and uh, work with another light. So what you do is, is when I get one light in the right position, I hit the click on this thing, and what you can, and when I click on the can, 
uh, um, what you'll notice is a padlock came up. And that this this can is now frozen. He doesn't accept either movement commands or color commands. And I didn't lock the other one, so I can move this other one around. And notice I put a soft a soft texture on this one. I could go actually go back to a tight spotlight on that one. Narrow spot is four. Boop. And now she's got a tight spot on one light and a narrow spot on the other. And you can see how that looks. And it's uh, definitely very cool. Um, if I want to lock this guy into position and play with this guy, I just unlock him, and now I can move, uh, I can move this, this can around here. Okay, so, um, 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 we have all the same parameters in terms of radius and fall off. Um, an example of that, let me, uh, let me go to this here. I'm going to actually pick, um, I'll pick like a soft color, uh, for this, uh, for the, for the light bulb in this thing. And you notice it's generating a fairly broad, soft light on her now. Um, I may not want that to go all the way to the wall here. So if I now set the intensity, I'm, so, I'm sorry, the radius of that light. Let's say I'm going to set this thing to uh, three meters. Uh, now what it's going to do is it's going to light her with the soft light, but it's not necessarily going to um, going to light uh, light the shadows on her because it's about three meters from him to, or from her to the can. It's another three or four meters to the wall. If I could set it to 10, for example, you can see I'm getting a little shadow or set it to 20 and I get an even bigger shadow. And remember, I've got a texture on this thing. The other thing I can do on textures, and this is kind of more for the uh, for the video guys, is I can actually rotate a texture. So I can actually take this texture and put it in rotation. And uh, you can see what a, what the rotating texture does in terms of kind of making a, uh, a fun set of uh, scenes out of that. And I can sit there and move the uh, move this shadow around until I'm happy with it. Um, I could raise that shadow. I could take that shadow off and give more of a floor projection by raising those. This can is almost all the way on the ceiling pointing down at her. Lock that one into position and then I can go back in and focus on that other shadow on that, uh, on that up with the other projector until I get it the way I want it, which would be an awesome photo. Okay, so uh, now you can see how uh, two of these projectors work. I'm going to unlock both of them and uh, de-res it here for a second. Let me res a new light one more time. Um, clicking on the cans can be a little difficult. I actually just made a little button here. When you click on it, it brings the same thing up. So I can, I don't, I can just do it off the HUD, and I don't have to actually find the little control panel on the projector here. Um, I have something called gobos now. So let's walk you through a gobo here. Let me give you an example of a gobo. I'm going to pick the uh, Vines gobo. And it takes a little bit of time to resin. Now, what a gobo is is a go between, and when it, what a go between is is a uh, um, a texture that would sit in front of the light, just like a a metal um, uh, go between would in a, in a theater setting. And now, all of a sudden, you can see it's uh, projecting. Uh, it's projecting it. Now that's kind of a little intense in all honesty. One of the things you can do to help with this thing is is I can go turn on ambient inclusion and um, it just softens up those lights a whole bunch. So I can now mix the gobos with the projectors here. So I can now go change the light bulb and put a uh, medium spotlight on that. And now that projector mixes with them. So in either case, now I've got this, uh, this uh, go between in front of my uh, um, can and I can just sit there and move this thing around. Um, I can also uh, take this prim and put it into a, a rotation here um, like that and uh, blah, 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 blah. I just put a prim that doesn't let's pick a we'll pick the soft texture 7 here for the light bulb here give it a second to res here and turn my can back on here I guess you can see it and then I'm going to put this one into rotation here. I can say like minus medium or something like that. So what happens is, is now the light bulb is rotating inside the can to a fixed projection. Um, if you want to see how that looks, I can actually just turn the gobo and set it back to zero is transparent. And you can see what that light looks like. And then I can put the, uh, the vines back in. Boom, and those are part of the lights. Um, the gobo moves with the uh, light as you might expect. And I will lock that one in place, res another one, move it over a bit, and uh, we can put a, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's go into another gobo, 
and this gobo is going to be the window gobo. It takes a little bit for the texture to res here. Um, wait for it to res, wait for it to res. What it kind of does is it looks like a window blinds. So I can uh, back this thing out here. Um, I can pick a color that's a little bit more like a sun color. What do we pick? Like a warming 81.7.4, something like that. Sorry, I'm chattering the throttle a little much here. Okay, so uh, once you're ready to shoot, you just go ahead and hit hide. Now, unfortunately, here's a reality, which is if I hide these textures, then um, the textures go transparent and their ability to hide goes away. It's a little unfortunate, but I want your guys' feedback how that goes. So now take a look at the room here. Um, I've got uh, both uh, windows and uh, um, um, a, a textured prim hanging on here. I could actually then go fire up Rembrandt on her using the uh, regular lights that I have. Oh, check this out, guys. This is kind of fun. If I set them all the way up, they go shiny, and then they pick up all the lights from the, uh, uh, from the projectors here. Um, I can say, eh, maybe that's a little too intense, 0.5. 0.6 that's pretty good and then I hit hide and I've got some pretty cool shooting to do I may come back in and go I'd like to uh, move the shadow of this guy around a little bit take the lock off him uh, come back in and uh, scoot that shadow around hide all the lights and shoot away all right guys there you go love your feedback talk to you later